morning, everybody. Welcome to our session on communication systems. Today, we will have three interesting talks. The first one will be with Alexei Vosdariev with the paper Outage Performance of the Alpha Beauty She Shadow Web Fading Model Channel. Alexei, you have 15 minutes for your presentation and five minutes for questions. You can start uh, whenever you want. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, can you see my slides? Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Alexey Gvozdarev, and I present a research entitled as Outage Performance uh, of the Alpha Beliefs Shadowed Fading Channel Model. Uh, the progress in the ad hoc communication design nowadays is mostly limited by the existing restrictions implied by the wireless communication propagation channel, especially in the millimeter wave range, including free space optical communication. Uh, this means that more adequate the channel model is uh, to the real life uh, propagation conditions, uh, the better will be the overall system performance description and prediction. For the current research, we assume one of the newest models, the so-called Alpha Balliose Shadowed model, will denote it as Alpha BX Shadowed for brevity, uh, which supposes that electromagnetic waves uh, propagate to the receiver in multiple clusters of multipath waves with line of sight and non-line of sight components that undergo non-linear envelope distortions due to non-homogeneous nature of the environment. It is a five-parametric model, which is mathematically defined in terms of uh, the envelope nonlinearity coefficient, uh, the overall uh, and line of sight shadowing intensities, Mx and My, and uh, the parameters that control the average power of multipath and dominant components. Those are capital omegas. Uh, the basic statistical description was uh, recently reported and uh, includes the probability density function and cumulative distribution function of instantaneous signal-to-noise ratio, uh, which are given in terms of uh, confluent uh, univariate and uh, bivariate uh, hypergeometric functions. It is uh, worth mentioning that uh, Alpha BX Shadowed is a generalized channel model and it includes a wide range of specific simplified cases uh, as a particular subcases, including classical BX model, uh, BX Shadowed, uh, a well renowned uh, Kappa Mu Shadowed model and its counterpart Kappa Mu model, Russian Shadowed, and uh, simplified models like uh, Weibull, Hoyt, Nakagami, Riley, and many others. Although the pioneering publication presented some results uh, regarding the average beta rate and agoda capacity, uh, which quantifies the system quality performance. Uh, no other results, uh, mainly due to the novelty of the model, uh, are present up to date, including the reliability analysis. And that was the main motivation for this research. Uh, classical uh, reliability of a wireless communication system is quantified in terms of uh, outage probability, which is defined uh, as the probability that the instantaneous signal-to-noise ratio falls within some uh, pre-specified uh, threshold. Uh, and uh, since the outage is mainly caused by the channel fading and shadowing effects, uh, which can be des described in terms of the amount of fading uh, parameter. Uh, as a unified measure uh, of uh, fading severity, it was also assumed for the further analysis. Moreover, not long ago, uh, an alternative long-term uh, performance metric, a uh, channel quality estimation index, uh, was proposed uh, for wireless system evalu evaluation and optimization. Uh, the combination of uh, outage probability and the amount of fading uh, helps to quantify the fading regime um, of the fading channel, uh, the TT exhibits, uh, defining the so-called hyper-Riley regime or hyper-Riley modes of the channel, uh, meaning that uh, if uh, the corresponding parameter uh, outage probability amount of fading or go to capacity is worse than that of for, for the Riley channel, uh, the channel undergoes a weak, strong or full hyper-Riley fading. Moreover, since it is well known that there is no single metric that can solemnly define uh, communication quality or reliability. Uh, it was um, uh, proposed to use the joint reliability quality analysis in terms of uh, outage probability error rate curve. It demonstrates the preference of uh, outage or, or quality over reliability or vice versa for giving fading conditions. Uh, for the assumed performance metrics, so the closed form expressions uh, were obtained. First, the outage probability presented on the slide uh, was uh, derived and its upper and lower bounds uh, for the highest signal-to-noise ratio were obtained. 
Furthermore, uh, the derived upper bound for the outage probability was uh, used to assess the asymptotic system performance. According to the prevailing model, uh, the system performance for an asymptotically increasing average signal-to-noise ratio can be described with uh, two main parameters, the so-called uh, coding gain and uh, diversity gain, which were extracted uh, for the model and connected uh, uh, with the channel parameters. Moreover, uh, sorry. Uh, moreover, since the outage, uh, the amount of fading and uh, channel quality estimation indicator are defined in terms of uh, raw moments so of the instantaneous signal-to-noise ratio, uh, their general expressions were derived. They are presented on the slide um, and uh, further used for system analysis. Uh, the derived expressions made it possible uh, to perform the outage analysis of the BX shadowed uh, feeding model. Uh, for simulation, all the parameters, including uh, feeding and shadowing intensities uh, and line of sight and on line of sight powers, were varied in a practically interesting uh, valuable uh, ranges. And uh, for joint uh, quality reliability analysis, uh, quadrature amplitude modulation was assumed. First, uh, the correctness of the derived closed form expressions uh, with verify, were verified um, uh, through simulation um, depicted with uh, markers on the plot and numerical evaluation, uh, those are lines. And the closeness of the derived up and lower bounds uh, were analyzed. Uh, it can be seen that the average signal-to-noise ratio, starting from which uh, the bounds deliver reasonably good approximations, uh, depend on uh, nonlinearity coefficient. Uh, the greater the alpha, the nonlinearity coefficient, uh, the smaller the signal-to-noise ratio uh, at which um, um, the bounds uh, are uh, correct. And uh, for example, for 20 dB, uh, it is equal to around 20 dB for alpha equal to 2, and uh, around 7 dB for a nonlinear coefficient equal to 4. Uh, it was observed that the greatest impact, uh, besides the nonlinearity transmission coefficient, uh, isn't used by the overall fading parameter. It is MX. Uh, here we see the results for two fading scenarios with MY. Uh, equal to 2.5, uh, those are solid lines, and uh, dashed lines for MY equal to uh, 0.5. It is uh, the case of uh, most heavy shadowing of the line of sight component. Uh, what is more interesting is that uh, its dependence, the outage uh, probability, dependence of the outage probability on the values of uh, overall shadowing intensity, uh, uh, the system performance may improve or degrade uh, irrespective of other parameters. For instance, here we see that Estaba de ser como de Sorry, I was kicked out by the organizers, strangely. Can I continue? Yes, please. Um, 
connecting the outage probability with channel quality indicator estimation, uh, one can note that the impact of nonlinearity coefficient alpha is more pronounced for channels with bad propagation conditions. Here we have a fading uh, intensity is equal to three. Those are dashed lines and 0.5 uh, with the solid lines. Uh, moreover, the impact of uh, channel quality estimation indicator is non-equal for its constant relative change. As it was mentioned earlier, the analysis of outage uh, amount of fading itself helps to identify the regime of propagating channel. The yellow line here corresponds to the Riley fading, detaching the hyper Riley region from the lighter than Riley fading, and defining the set of uh, fading and uh, shadowing parameters, those are MX and MY, that constitute to, the, to those scenarios, heavy, uh, heavier than uh, Riley fading or lighter than Riley fading. Here we have a hyper Riley map for nonlinearity coefficient equal to 2, and for nonlinearity coefficient equal to 4. One can clearly see that the shrinkage of the um, parameter range uh, that corresponds to the fading conditions heavier than Riley, um, which means that the increase uh, in uh, nonlinearity transformation coefficient helps to combat fading. Lastly, uh, the proposed joint reliability quality analysis was performed. Here, the dashed black line, uh, it is a bisectoral line without markers, represent the state of parity between outage probability and average bit error rate. It can be seen that the main factor that uh, influences uh, the balance between the two is the threshold average signal to noise ratio. Moreover, the increase of nonlinearity coefficient alpha further enhances this imbalance. It was also identified that for very poor channel quality, it is low quality and reliability, um, the balance is biased in favor of outage probability. Uh, summarizing all the uh, all the above and concluding the performed analysis, I'd like to give some closing remarks. Uh, First, the research presents and numerically verifies the derived closed form outage analysis of a wireless communication system functioning in the presence of multipath fading described by Alpha BX shadowed model. And second, uh, the performed numeric simulation demonstrated strong impact of nonlinearity coefficient alpha and overall fading intensity MX uh, on all of the assumed quality metrics. Uh, the results of the research can be of specific interest uh, for the performance prediction of uh, fading wireless communication systems and their possible optimization. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Alexei. Uh, well, we are open for questions. If anybody from the people hearing us have a question, please go ahead. Okay, Alexei, I have a question uh, for you. You, you yes. show that the there is a great dependence on the nonlinear parameter that can range from one, I don't know, you put in your graphs up to 10. Uh, what would be the most practical values for alpha? Up to four, up to six, or? Well, uh, that def depends on the uh, fading scenarios. For example, for urban communication, the practical valuable range is from somewhere around one to uh, four, four, uh, four and a half. But if we are talking about like buildings, uh, communication uh, inside the buildings with uh, like uh, short range communications, like in 5G, it will be somewhere around from um, three or four to five or five and a half. So we will not be expecting nonlinear values uh, bigger than, I don't know, eight or nine, because you put in the plots. Uh, probably yes, probably yes. Well, and I have another question that came to my mind. Uh, in this case, you, you show the outage performance for this uh, distribution, the alpha muli. What would be your thoughts about uh, trying to express other um, statistics such as uh, <clears throat> a level crossing rate or average fade duration because there you need the two-dimensional distributions what would be your thoughts trying in, in this sense trying to expand this work that we present to such kind of statistics uh, oh actually 
uh, actually we are working on this uh, right now and we are working about uh, around the second order statistics uh, exactly about level crossing rate and uh, the amount of uh, crossing uh, uh, number of crossing um, but we have only preliminary results so i i cannot be definite about uh, uh, having some uh, tables or figures that i can share up to now Yes, my, my main question was because uh, for such statistics, you need the two-dimensional distribution, which is not so simple. And moreover, you need the distribution of the derivatives. So is yes, it complicated that, to deal? Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, well, if we use a classical assumption of, uh, um, of uh, a possibility to detach uh, the uh, derivative, uh, the distribution of a derivative uh, uh, of an envelope and uh, the distribution of an envelope itself, as it is classically done in the literature, um, it is not very difficult to derive the second order statistics. Uh, but uh, if we are talking that uh, such a detach, uh, detach cannot be performed, well, there will be definitely problems because of the complicated uh, hypergeometric functions that uh, are involved, uh, for example, in CDF duration. It's true, it's true. Well, if there are no more questions, um, you can go ahead uh, with the second talk. Oh, thank you, be, very much. you will be given the talk. Yep, yep. Okay, me. so our second talk is tight bit error rate bounds for MPSK signals for the shadow weight second order scattering fading. Go ahead. Um, I sh Thank you. I'm going to share my slides. Can you see my slides? Yes. Uh, once more, good afternoon. Uh, and I present uh, uh, my research entitled as Tide Bear Bounds uh, for MPSK signals for the shadowed second order scattering fading. Uh, in modern wireless communication systems like uh, 5G, new radio, and uh, Wi-Fi 7 and beyond, uh, throughput greatly depends on modulation type uh, that is being deployed. A classical approach is to increase the communication rate, uh, is to exploit uh, the quadrature amplitude modulation with high dimensional constellations, for example, up to 1024 QAM in 5G, new radio, or even high in Wi-Fi 7. Uh, nevertheless, in poor propagation conditions, uh, uh, which are typical for urban communications, uh, such modulations uh, demonstrate unacceptably high outage probability. And the adaptive modulation and coding used in modus, uh, modern wireless communication systems uh, suggests uh, to resort uh, to low-order PSK modulations. For example, in 5G, depending on the channel quality indicator measurements, QPSK is supported both for uplink and downlink for shared and controlled physical channels, as well as uh, for the broadcast information channel. Aside from the poor propagation conditions, modern signal processing made it possible to utilize even higher order PSK. For example, 8 PSK is recommended for Earth exploration in 8 GHz satellite band uh, in some digital uh, image transmission and video broadcasting systems and in some uh, free space optical communication applications. The performance of uh, such systems heavily depends on the propagation conditions, uh, and thus the proposed research presents an analysis of the MPSK wireless communication system performance for recently presented generalized channel model, uh, the second order scattering fading channel with fluctuating line of sight. Within such model, the received signal envelope is uh, composed of uh, three distinct terms, the line of sight component with a constant amplitude and a uniformly distributed uh, phase, uh, the Riley and double Riley scattered components, which are constant, uh, which have constant amplitude. It is also assumed that the line of sight component undergoes unit variance gamma distributed uh, shadowing with uh, shadowing intensity M. Uh, such a model can be mathematically uh, described in terms of uh, either physical parameters, uh, those are uh, components amplitudes, uh, al an alternative set of parameters, it is uh, the double Riley components factor, uh, which uh, the meaning of the double Riley component uh, power relative to the total power, and the line of sight component factor beta, uh, uh, which defines uh, the uh, relative uh, power of the line of sight component relative to the total power. Uh, all conditional parameters conditioned on uh, the line of sight shadowing. Uh, 
such model is suitable for both wireless uh, radio frequency and free space optical communication. For example, it can describe such effects as double scattering diffraction on the edges, pipeline channels, and some other models, and can efficiently approximate models like IK, which uh, are widely used for optical communication, for example, for uh, modeling the irradiance. Uh, the basic statistical description was derived and uh, in a pioneering work by Professor Lopez Fernandez with colleagues. Uh, but the problem with this model is that it uh, does not admit close form representation of its probability density function, neither for envelope nor for signal to noise ratio. Uh, thus, the derivation of uh, the expression for the error rate becomes somewhat uh, intricate. At this point, we'll assume the standard representation for the error rate of MPSK modulation in terms of uh, Q function. It must be highlighted that such a procedure leads to a double integral, which hardly can be solved in closed form. Moreover, the numerical solution, uh, its computational uh, time and accuracy highly depends on chosen integration method and strategy, as well as on uh, working accuracy and precision. To reduce the complexity of the problem, it is a common practice to use various forms of uh, Gaussian Q-function approximation. Uh, and one of the prevailing nowadays is the so-called uh, exponent type, uh, exponent mix type approximation, which is defined by the set of coefficients a, a, k, b, k, and the number of terms. Uh, among those, um, we assume the most widely used ones with a proven computational efficiency, namely the approximation proposed by Professor Chiani with colleagues in 2003, uh, the prone approximation uh, obtained by Professor Loscott with uh, colleagues in uh, 2008, the one presented by Professor Namalai with colleagues in uh, 2016, the prox uh, approximation presented by Professor Satwani with uh, colleagues in 2016, uh, and um, the approximation derived by Professor uh, Faisal al Buanini with colleagues in 2020. Since most of the works uh, mentioned above uh, present several approximations, only the best of them were chosen. Um, all of the approximations of the Gaussian Q-functions were cross-compared in terms of uh, average bit error rate of an uh, MPSK modulation and tested against numerical simulation. Uh, to have a reference, uh, or to have a reference point at hand, in the presented research, we derived the exact expression for the average bit error rate with arbitrary exponential mixture type representation, uh, which is presented uh, on the slide. It must be highlighted that um, this expression is valid for integer valid fading intensity m. Uh, since uh, in this case the initial probability density function for the uh, fluctuating second order scattering fading channel uh, admits a closed form expression. Uh, moreover, the derived expression made it possible to find uh, easy and computationally efficient approximation in high signal to noise ratio regime, which is uh, presented uh, on the slide. Uh, finally, in order not to limit oneself uh, to integer values uh, of uh, fading intensity, parameter m, an exact expression was derived for arbitrary valid parameters. Although the expression is given in terms of uh, generalized um, bivariate and trivariate Fox H functions, uh, it can be officially calculated uh, numerously, uh, numerically. Uh, the derived expressions uh, made it possible to study the performance of uh, assumed uh, approximations. To this extent, a system deploying uh, the MPSK modulation with uh, M up to 8 was assumed, and all the parameters, including fading severity, double Riley components factor, and a line of sight components factor, uh, were varied in practical valuable ranges. Uh, the results obtained with the assumed approximations were compared in terms of relative error um, with a brute force numeric integration. Um, here we see computational results for average bit error rate for 8 PSK modulation obtained by direct integration. Uh, it is the black line. Um, here we have the black line, and uh, using five assumed approximations of the Gaussian Q function, those are colored lines. It can be noted that all the lines are quite close, starting from 7 dB. Uh, the curves are visually undistinguishable, because, except for the, bl uh, for the blue line, which corresponds to the first historically among the assumed approximations. It is an approximation by Professor Chiani, uh, pr proposed in uh, 2003. Uh, thus, the relative error uh, induced by the approximations is easier to analyze in uh, logarithmic scale. Uh, 
Uh, here we see the relative error for um, two sets of fading parameters with strong and weak double Riley component uh, for QPSK modulation and for 8PSK modulation. It was uh, demonstrated that the choice of the tightest approximation depends on the average signal-to-noise ratio in the channel. In the area of low signal-to-noise ratio, uh, the best or the tightest approximation is uh, the one that was proposed by Professor Albuanani uh, in 2020. And for greater scenario, uh, the tightest is the approximation proposed by Professor Stefani in 2017. Moreover, it behaves in a specific way. Um, its uh, average bit error rate uh, uh, accuracy increases sharply with the increase of signal-to-noise ratio and reaches uh, an exemplary negative 50 dB uh, of relative error around a signal-to-noise ratio, average signal-to-noise ratio in the channel of 30 dB. Uh, these approx this approximation was further chosen uh, for comparison with the derived exact solution and is asymptotics. Here we see perfect agreement between them, which validates the analytical part of the research. And uh, the, the derived approximation performs well even for fairly small signal-to-noise ratio um, around from 7 to 12 uh, dB. Moreover, it can be seen that the difference in the average beta rate for a wide range of fading conditions between QPSK and APSK uh, modulations is um, the greatest in asymptotic region and reaches only 3 dB, uh, which, is, uh, which can be assumed quite tolerable. Summarizing the above, uh, I conclude my presentation with some closing general remarks uh, presented in the slide that were previously stated in the presentation. Thank you for attention. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Alexei, thank you very much. You should be a marathonist because you beat the clock by 10 minutes. <laughs> so we have enough time uh, uh, for questions. If anybody from the audience have a question, please take some time to think about it. We are open for questions. Oh, Alexei, I have some uh, questions or, or comments. Uh, this work you present is for uh, PSK modulation. So yeah. it came to my mind uh, that when you have uh, influence of Doppler shift in the channel, you need to use uh, differential phase shift keying. And there is a, a well-known book, for sure you know it maybe, from a Russian author, Yuri Okomiev, that he proposed to use differential modulation of several orders, which means first derivative, second derivative, et cetera, et cetera, in order to, to face the challenges of getting uh, Doppler shift influence on the channel. What would be your thoughts uh, in, in the sense of it would be difficult to include in this kind of analysis you present, not for uh, MPSK, but for DPSK of higher order? Um, How thank you very much. Would be to, to go to this uh, scenario right now? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, yes, up to now it will be quite difficult because of the quite uh, uh, complex formulation in terms of uh, signal-to-noise ratio, uh, instantaneous signal-to-noise ratio probability density function. We focused uh, specifically on um, PSK modulations, not DPSK modulations, differential PSK modulations, because they are included in the standards and uh, in the like recommendations for or deep space exploration and stuff like that. Um, but yes, I'm aware of uh, the publication that, what you, uh, that you are talking about, about the textbook, and uh, we are looking uh, in this uh, field uh, up now. Thank you. I think it will be uh, it will be possible. It won't be very easy. Uh, we haven't started this work yet, but we are looking at it. OK, thank you very much. Uh, from the audience, any, any questions? Somebody? Well, Alexei, we thank you very much for these two interesting talks you gave today. Thank you very much. Thank you.
está este, Ángel. Si gustas empezar, si tienes siempre. Well, our final talk today will be a fully connected neural network for polar channel decoding, and it will be presented by Jesus Angel Sanchez Rodriguez. You know, you have 15 minutes or a bit more for your presentation, so you can be relaxed, and then we'll have five minutes for questions. Good morning. I'm glad to be here presenting our paper on polar channel decoding using a fully connected neural network. This paper explores a relatively new approach to decoding polar codes, which are a class of codes that have been shown to achieve good capacities over a wide range of channels. Uh, channel coding plays a crucial role on communication systems. Um, it involves the use of error correcting codes to enhance the reliability of transmitted information over noisy channel. This is especially important in scenarios where the channel quality is poor. By adding redundancy to the data, channel coding enables the receiver to detect and correct errors that may occur during transmission. Without a proper coding scheme, the source data can be corrupt leading to significant degradation on the quality of the communication and in the overall system. One of those schemes is the polar, our polar codes. They were introduced by Gerard Alarican in 2009 and have become one of the most uh, promising coding schemes for future communication systems due to its probability of achieving Shannon's capacity uh, on the binary discrete memory test channel. The key idea behind polar codes is to explore the polarization phenomenon. <coughs> the polarization is uh, it's a transformation of a of channel of, of, with arbitrary capacity into a set of, of subchannels with high capacity and others with very low capacities. Information bits are sent to those over those channels with higher capacities and the lower the channel with lower capacities are used to send quality check bits for error correction. Um, the polarization uh, consists on combining uh, several copies of the original channel. This combination can be done in a random way, but it has been shown that the, the structure helps the receiver to correctly um, correctly decode the, the source message. Uh, decoding polar codes is not an easy task. The most common decoding algorithm is the successive cancellation decoder. It has a complexity of n log n, where n is the, the code word length. Uh, this complexity may be prohibitive if as n becomes uh, larger. And the main issue is that probabilistic decoders and successive cancellation are serial process, serial processes. And this leads to high latitude, which makes it more difficult to achieve high throughput. And it is necessary to achieve high data rates. Then uh, for analysis for the channel, no. What can I say? Neural Networks offers a solution by parallelizing process capabilities. They are, they, are, they are used to classify data, recognize patterns, and make predictions. These structures are a set of interconnected artificial network neurons. They um, process input data to generate new information. Every artificial network neuron uh, performs a linear regression, which depends on the train, trainable parameters and the input data. Then it passes it through a non-linear activation function to create complex decision boundaries. 
in other words, the choice of the activation of the activation function externally um, impacts the accuracy of the neural network. Where I'm going to show the activation function that we consider in this work. The first is the real function. Is this the classic function for the classifying task? It is computationally efficient, but it has two main issues. The point of discontinuity uh, at zero and the negative domain, which maps every value to, to zero, provoking the then errors on our system. The next function, the exponential linear unit, includes an exponential region, trying to avoid the saturation of the zero, zero value, uh, not for it. It, it provokes that uh, our 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 network's uh, processes uh, will be more complex. We have the parametric defiling linear unit. It introduces a trainable parameter, but it needs a it, it requires a large amount of data amount of data. Um, it increases the, the the training complexity as well. One variation is the liquid rel. That parameter, uh, the, the parameter that controls the slope of the negative domain uh, remains st static during all the network processes. Then we can uh, decrease the complexity as we were using uh, the Prelo function. And the, net, the last vari variation, no, the, the last activation is the cellular function. It is important because its main property of having outputs, um, of having normalized outputs, it has been shown that having normalized outputs improves convergence. To achieve this, we have to we have to put uh, normalization layers uh, the output of each hydrant. But if we use a cellular function, this is not necessary. Uh, in order to, to see our results, uh, I have explained how I come up with this with this. I use twenty thousand code words because uh, I I wanted for you to compare with uh, the state of art uh, architectures. There's a paper. Growth by Gruber and Gruber at all. And they use this amount of code words. Their code rate is one half, and the code word length is 32. Then the programming language was, was Python, and I run the programs on the collaborative platform because I have access to GPUs for free. Other results. The optimizer was the other optimizer with the parameters uh, and parameters. Um, how can I say the default parameters uh, for the TensorPro library? The liquid ReLU performs or all the what performs the other activation function, both in accuracy and number of epochs. The next candidate was the yellow function of parameter five. So the problem is when we want we wanted to increase the size of the architecture, the yellow function stopped working well. The, this other do, those functions, prelu and selu, uh, had almost the same uh, the same results, but the main difference is the number of flipbox to achieve learning. Uh, one main part of the system is the optimizer. It uh, is in charge, in charge of change the trainable parameters according to a loss function. We prove the way the stochastic gradient descent. It uses gradient descent um, algorithm to find the minimum 
error. Uh, one variation is the momentum, the momentum optimizer. It includes uh, a momentum term that controls the length of the step in the gradient descent. In order to not get to, to not get stuck on on local minimums, minimums. The next variation is the nested optimizer. It uses uh, past momentums on the gradient calculation to impose more control over the length of the step. The RMS probe it includes um, an adaptive learning rate in order to get smaller size of the step at final at final stages of the training. These two are the most powerful optimizers because they are a combination of the of, of the previous ones. Uh, the Adam includes the adaptive learning rate as well as the momentum factor. And the Adam is a variation of Adam optimizer, but we use the Mr. of trick to impose most control from the learning descent. You can see our results. Adam is the best in accuracy, but Adam suffers less overfitting and uh, the, amount, the amount of epochs is oh, almost the half. The other optimizers uh, obtain uh, also good results. Then putting all together, uh, we come up with this topology. We double, uh, we we use only three hidden layers. And in layer one, we have we. We use this configuration. The, this uh, initializer is necessary in order to maintain outputs, uh, normalized outputs. Then in layer two and layer, layer three, the liquid relu, uh, performs the other uh, activation functions. The optimizer was the nada because uh, we were suffering, suffering for, for we were suffering for overfitting. These are the different parameters. And we can achieve 93% of, um, uh, of the coding code, code work, of the correct code, the code, coding work. And the time per epoch is 29 seconds. This is in training uh, for 20,000 uh, 20, code works for each uh, training set. Uh, we tried with another architecture with all the, the size. Uh, the another if parameters remains the same. Um, but um, one percent of uh, an increase of one percent in accuracy, but the uh, time per epoch uh, increases almost the double. So this is the the, the best architecture for the decoding task. Awesome. Uh, those are probabilistic decoders that are in the state of the art. For 20,000 code words, the exoservice cancellation did it in 44 seconds. Another is uh, 7, 60, 64 seconds. And the fast simplified exoservice cancellation uh, it's one of the best. It does the codification in 11 seconds. When we run the, our fully connected neural networks on GPU, we obtain this, the same result, this, this, the results in 10 seconds. So it's, it's faster than the probabilistic decoders. On the other hand, probabilistic decoders achieve 99% of accuracy, and we only obtain almost 93%. So we need more. We need uh, more investigation to overcome with this problem. On the conclusion, the main contribution of this research is the comprehensive exploration of neural network decoding for, for polar cores. The so systematic systematic experimentation with various factors such as activation functions, optimizers, training techniques, hyperparameters, and network sizes. 
a combination of cellular and liquid rail activations, NADAM optimization, patch normalization, the door organization, and improved network topology has been found to deliver a standing decoding performance around 90%. That was from my presentation. I thank you for your okay, Thank you very much for your great, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, we are open for questions. If anybody on the, online or here in the auditorium has questions, please feel free. Well, I have some uh, some questions for you. Yeah. The first is, uh, if I understood properly, you put there that some of the strategies you present require uh, from 35 or one of them, 100 epochs to train, right? Yes. And in the last one, you put that uh, there was something like, uh, what was it? 30 seconds time per epoch for training, right? Yes. That would mean that this one, for instance, in one of the previous, uh, when you said that you were requiring 30 epochs to train with 29 seconds, that would mean something like uh, 10 minutes to train. Am I right or am I wrong? No. It is only when we were using Adam Optimizer with the parameters uh, where, um, how can I say it? They, they were not tuned. Uh, correctly. Then, when we did all the experiments, we overcome with one uh, with one topology and the uh, time uh, that takes to for the network to train um, suffers from uh, variation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, what would be the time then uh, for training the the whole network? The whole network is that time. 30 seconds. Yes. So after you train uh, the network, you can start sending your signals and the decoding times is what you show it was uh, eight, seconds. Eight, eight seconds, something like that. Uh, right? Yes. Eight seconds for uh, 20,000 20, 20, pulses. And you don't charge your system with, I don't know, because you need a, a circuit or something in order to build the, no, the, the network. This is doing via some, via simulation. I don't have a uh, hardware to perform that. Okay, okay. And what would be then the price, uh, let us imagine, when you want to implement really this? Because really the reduction in time is really impressive. Uh, really it's impressive and say, well, it is good. But the first question is, well, we have to pay something. What would be the price, I don't know, a circuit in the, in the chip or what would be the price we're paying for using uh, this fully? This uh, maybe you don't know, I'm not well versed in circuit design. But do you think there would be a price? Because it, the times are really impressive. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the, the price around uh, every fully connected neural network that is the simplest, uh, basic as 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 you that was uh, optimized yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Question? Complaints? Well, Angel, we thank you very much for your presentation. And that will be all for, for this panel. Uh, don't go people online because we have the, the next uh, the plenary talk. So thank you.